Ladies, gentlemen, boys, girl, YouTube reviewer reviewing the video before everyone else sees it. What is going on? It is your least favorite model vlogger, Brian636. Today, I am not on my 636. You guys have been requesting it a lot. I'm finally back on the supermodel. And even more so, you guys have been requesting a hoodie back in Chicago. Boom, you got it. Still with snow on the ground. It is melting pretty quick though because it is 50 degrees today, which is super warm for us. Right now, we are in the North Lawndale section of K-Town and today we are heading to the neighborhood of Austin. Now, I haven't been to Austin in over a year and this neighborhood holds a special place in my heart for a few reasons that I'll get into in this video. We're gonna go try out something Chicago has become extremely synonymous for, which is jerk tacos, especially here on the west side. And I can't believe I've never featured them on Hood Eats up until episode 32. So guys, I'm not gonna talk too much. Definitely got a lot of history to go through with you today. Definitely got a lot of riding to do on old girl here. And I haven't eaten today yet. So my patience is running thin. Let's go. Man, does it feel good to be back in my hometown doing a hoodie for you guys. I had to go to freaking Orlando and Miami to do the past couple of hoodies. It's not even wearing my latex gloves today. It's so freaking warm. Dude, big old street sweeper. They're out today. If you move your car, people, you're going to get a big old fat ticket if you didn't. I gotta remind myself today. I know I haven't even done a wheelie yet, but these streets are still full of salt and just that residue from the snow. Probably not the best material to be doing stoppies on. I'm sure we're still going to do them anyway, though. I'm sure cops aren't used to seeing bikes out just yet. I'm sure no one's used to seeing bikes out just yet. They're used to it being cold out and not seeing motorcycles at all, you know? Diaper drive going on or something. Speed bumps in every little of these side streets. Wheelie over them. Woo! Oh, what up? Oh, do it again? All right, all right. That's my guy. Once we cross over Cicero here, we have officially entered the Austin neighborhood and we are out of K-Town. Here we are, going down the famous Madison Street. I've only done one hoodie tier before and it was right there at The Looking, which is a DJ Khaled's restaurant here. I ended up goofing around for random guys' Snapchats. Let me tell you guys a little bit about this very unique neighborhood. I'll start off by saying that this is one of Chicago's largest neighborhoods. Not only in just area that it takes up, but also in population. It has almost 100,000 residents. In 1860, a farmer named Henry Austin bought this 400 acre chunk and named it Austinville. He would go on to farm this area for years until the town of Cicero built its town hall on the south end of Austinville. The residents of Austinville voted to leave the town of Cicero and the city of Chicago annexed the neighborhood in 1899. A park was built on the south end of Austin as well called Columbus Park, which began to attract many immigrant families, primarily Italian, Greek, and Irish. And then the city built the L that connected a lot of the west side neighborhoods, including Austin to downtown, and the housing market began the boom here. In the 30s, the Great Depression hit, but the strong factories, Western Electric and Sears Roebuck, kept a majority of this neighborhood employed throughout these hard times, which just further increased immigration into the Austin neighborhood. In different pockets of this enormous neighborhood, you'll have a lot different of experience depending on where you are. It's split into four sections. Galewood to the farthest north primarily has city officials and not nearly the crime rate as the other three parts of the neighborhood. To the very south of the neighborhood, you have the island, which is separated from the Eisenhower Expressway. Then you have the two largest parts of the neighborhood, North and South Austin. Now I told you I had some connection to this neighborhood and I meant it. This is actually where my great aunt and grandma grew up, right here off Laverne. You can still see their church steeple over there that they used to go to every Sunday. The house that they lived in is currently uh, getting reconstructed and the neighborhood has gone through quite a bit of change since they lived here. They were part of that immigration move into this neighborhood that I was talking about in the late 1930s. Get out of here before I get copyrighted from that guy's subs blasting. I got, I got to redeem myself after that. Oh. 
But that right there brings me into a lot of what Austin is nowadays known for, which is the open air drug market. It's as easy as getting served from your car here. And this neighborhood's been known for that, unfortunately, for quite a long time. You just pull up on pretty much any block and you can get served. A lot different than when you know my grandma and great aunt lived here. If you're a heroin user, Austin is probably your first stop as far as where to go to get your drugs. It's called the Heroin Highway and the West Side Killing Fields for that very reason. It is the closest neighborhood to a lot of the more wealthy west suburbs as it is the farthest neighborhood outside of the city of Chicago as you head west. A full seven miles outside of the loop. In 2020, 375 people were shot in this neighborhood. 78 were murdered and 297 were wounded. These stats rank Austin as Chicago's most violent neighborhood for the fifth year in a row. It is not nearly in the shape as other neighborhoods either. There's abandoned buildings, there's boarded up businesses, however, not nearly to the extent of some of the other top 10 that I've covered. This neighborhood and the violence within it is clearly over the drug trade that exists within the blocks in this community. Let's see if we can find this place. I think it's called Jerk Shop. Hopefully it's open. It's hard to know what businesses are open and what businesses aren't open with COVID going on. A little bit of swerving. Hopefully these aren't too spicy. I'm a baby when it comes to spicy food, man. God, does the 450 feel good. Guy asked me if I wanted to sell it. At 8,000, 8,000 is my price. Show me, show me $8,000 in $100 bills. She's all yours, bud. You know where the jerk, the jerk shop is? I say, you know where the jerk spot is? Oh, it's right there? You gotta go around the front. Okay. We gotta park out front too? Yeah. All right. Hello. You guys are cash only? That's the ATM. Cash only. Holy shit. How would you like for that to be your garage? Lots of police cameras and shot spotters within the neighborhood to triangulate uh, when there is gunshots here. Which is crazy, pretty crazy to think about when you think about that number. 375 people shot. That's, that's more than one a day just in this neighborhood. More than one a day. 365 days in a year, there's more than that shot. Every freaking year. And they say of all, every six shootings, one person gets shot. So, because you know, five out of six times, nobody gets hit when guns are fired. So, you can, I cannot even imagine how often the shot spotter is going off here in the summer. I mean, we've been riding through here in the summer months, and you know, gunshots is not a uncommon occurrence, especially at night. Pretty crazy number to, to put your mind around, you know. I know I said all the numbers, but if you really think about it, that many people being shot, is it's fucking sad, man. It's really fucking sad. ATM available. Well, that's what I need. Hello. We'll be popping wheelies and shit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, on the bike. Two cars later. Cash only. Old dirty girl. I need some new titanium on there soon. What, on the wheelies and stuff? Yeah, just not, but then I saw it was cash only, so I had to go get cash. I don't carry cash on me a lot. I'll take two uh, jerk chicken tacos. Could I have a crush, actually? The orange? <laughs> yeah, we just ride them around. I mean. Yeah, I think something out there on Madison. I think we're picking him like that. Looks like fun. Yeah, it looks like y'all. Yeah. She sees us all the time out here. God, is she dirty? Should clean her up when I'm waiting for my tacos. This is what I miss having my 636 stunt tank. Now all my tacos might get all messy, but the price you pay when you ride a bike, I guess. Man, does it smell good though. I smell it out the damn bag. Or maybe I'm smelling Coleman's ribs and tips with the smoke coming out. Probably not. Really common out here too. Uh, block clubs. Pretty much just saying that a couple of old heads on the block that are going to enforce that you're not doing any of this crazy stuff. No loud music, lo loitering, drug activity, sitting in or on cars, drinking, no alcoholic beverages. So they're going to call the cops if you do it. Huge all over Austin. There's many, many, many blocks have that. The block club. I don't know if it works or not, but they got them. They got the signs up.
That's what John that stupid. Okay. Ambition in the neighborhood that's full of regrets. Maybe full of neglect, but we ain't missing the breath. As we breaking down the history, I bet you get to questioning what food is the best. So we taking the test. Yeah. Now I would be lying to all of y'all if I told you that I'm not having a hard time with these. I am do not do well with spicy stuff. I would put this at like a six or a seven for probably most people, but for me, it's like a nine or a 10. So super good, tasty as hell, and I'm gonna eat it no matter what, because I'm hungry and it's good. I just hate the after, the after spice, god damn. Are you hungry too? You want a taco too, Hi. little girl? <laughs> Sorry, you can't eat, you just get oil and gas. All right, I'm gonna try to do it, boys, I'm gonna try. Dude, I was just about to get back on my bike, fucking flat as hell. I got a nail through it, so, God. Gonna have to run this one back pretty slow, boys. Still gonna ride it, but, God, that sucks. Gotta fix this thing before Dallas. Let's get back on the road. God, I hate riding with a flat tire on this. Whatever, we're gonna make it work, boys. We are going down Austin Boulevard. Separate the neighborhood of Austin from the suburb of Oak Park. It's one of the classic red line tactics that the city of Chicago had in place to keep whites and blacks from not living with each other. Basically, the property taxes, crazy expensive in Oak Park, and it's also not a part of the city of Chicago. And I don't think there is a more law enforcement filled street than Austin for that very reason. Kind of to keep the people from Chicago on that side and to keep Oak Park people out of the like it's bizarre. We've literally been pulled over in our car multiple times when we cross over Austin Boulevard. Pretty much just to ask, do you know where you're coming from? Do you have any drugs on you? Do you mind if our dog smells the car? That kind of crap. It goes on along Austin Boulevard. It's also become a pretty violent strip of this neighborhood, and violence pours over into the suburbs quite frequently because of it. Because the gas station up and down Austin Boulevard and Harlem Avenue, and even some of the closer ones like Central Avenue, all these big, you know, exits off of the Eisenhower are pretty attractive to the drug trade. A beautiful historical neighborhood in a lot of ways. A lot of these sand brick homes here that were built after the Chicago fire for people to hopefully worry less about you know the whole city burning down again including their own homes holds a pretty special place in my heart that you know my family has its roots here and for it to be the most violent neighborhood in Chicago now pretty much the main reason being the drug trade is pretty incredible there's definitely job opportunities here in Austin a lot more than a lot of other neighborhoods within Chicago really does just come down to you know, the heroin and opioid epidemic within America and this being a hotbed where heroin is plentiful. So guys, all in all, we finally got to do a hoodie back in Chicago. I got to bring you guys along for some fire jerk chicken. I got to ride the supermoto. I got a flat tire, whatever. Did a couple wheelies, did a couple stoppies. And I brought you, most importantly, where my family resided for many years. As always, guys, I really do appreciate you tuning into the channel. If you want a chance to win freaking Drift Hayabusa that we're building over on the Patreon page, make sure to hit the link down in the description. It helps my channel in a lot of ways as well. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. If you're new here, subscribe. If you're pissed about my rear tire as much as I am, cutting this hoodie, it's a little bit short. Leave a comment down below and tell me. Lord knows I am. Always, guys, here's your least favorite moto vlogger, Brian636. Signing out. Peace.